Hello, everyone. Good evening and welcome to the UEFA Champions League group stage draw and gala. We're delighted to have with us here in Monaco so many football superstars and illustrious guests, including, of course, the representatives from all 32 clubs who have qualified for the group stage of the world's top club competition. It promises to be an exciting evening, as we'll all find out what challenges await the 32 contenders in their quest to reach the UEFA Champions League final in Cardiff. But that's not the only order of business here tonight. We'll also be handing out two very prestigious awards, and my co-host, Anne-Laure, has a lot more on that. Absolutely, Pedro. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we will find out who wins the men's and women's UEFA Best Player in Europe award. I'm very lucky. I'm in the middle of, the, of five of the six nominees, actually. Well, Pedro, I know that I have to wait until after the draw for the awards. But, I mean, it's not every day that you're sitting with those people, so I would never, ever forgive myself if I didn't take a picture with them. So it's selfie time. <laughs> Together? I'm not that fine. Yeah? Good, very good. I yeah? post that day, later on social media. You, you can be sure. Oh, oh, you better post that. That photo doesn't come <laughs> around every day, that's for sure. And forgive Anne-Laure, it's her first time hosting the draw, so she's a little bit excited. It's all good, though, and since she did mention social media, I can tell you that for the first time, the people watching the draw, wherever they may be, can send in questions to our nominees. They have been tweeting them already throughout the day, and they, they can do so now as well to the account at Champions League and use the hashtags Ronaldo, Bale, and Griezmann for the men's awards and Henri Egeberg and Murajan for the women's awards. We will select one question for each award winner and ask them live right here on stage later on. That is all later on. For now, we're going to take a look back at the last season in the UEFA Champions League, a campaign which ended with an all-Madrid showdown at the San Siro.
What an amazing season. Until the very last minute. Dramatic. It was exciting. No doubt about that. And of course, congratulations again to Real Madrid on their 11th title. A fantastic season for them. Well, the final decision will be held at the National Stadium of Wales in Cardiff, and our first guest this evening is one of the country's most famous footballing sons, a player who lifted the European Cup with Liverpool in 1981 and 1984. Please welcome on stage the ambassador for the 2017 final, together with the UEFA Champions League trophy in Russia. Ian, welcome. You're in great company. Did you miss her? Obviously. I always <laughs> miss a trophy like that. It's true. It's a, it's a great time to be a Welsh football fan, isn't it? Euro semi-finalist in France, and now the nation is hosting the Champions League final as well. Yeah, it's been absolutely fantastic. The Euros for Wales uh, was something incredible. You know, it took us 58 years to get there. But uh, what, they, what the players and the management done was absolutely amazing. And so this in to Cardiff now is to keep it carrying on. Yeah, for sure. Ian, we're going to keep you here for quite a while tonight as you hip up with the draw. So if you can please take your position at the draw table, that would be great. Now, uh, meanwhile, I understand that uh, Anne Lohr is somewhere backstage. Anne Lohr, where exactly are you? Absolutely, Pedro. I'm backstage. I'm with one, two, three former players. The fourth who will be with us tonight is hidden somewhere, so it's going to be a surprise for us. You know, those gentlemen are going to draw the different teams from the different parts, and for part one, the responsibility is with this gentleman. So you know what, Clarence? We better go get going. Okay. We are on in a minute. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, Anlo. Our next guest this evening is Clarence Seedorf, the only man to have won the UEFA Champions League with three different clubs. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage the man himself, Clarence Seedorf. Here we are again, Clarence. It's very nice to have you with us this evening. You've won this trophy four times with three different teams. Okay, you must have a secret. Uh, yeah, being in the right place at the right moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's luck, or not, not only luck. In life, we always need luck, and I'm, I'm you know, uh, happy to have been able to give, make a contribution. And uh, but great colleagues and, and great football players that have helped me in great clubs, with great history. And you've had a great influence on that as well, Clarence. And it's great to have you here tonight. We're going to put you to work, okay? You're yeah, going to uh, help us out. <laughs> yeah, it is. We're going, to help, uh, we're going to help us out with the draw. So if I can please ask you to take your Hello. position Thank right you. there. Thank We'd you. appreciate that. And now we're also going to be joined on stage by my UEFA colleagues, Giorgio Marchetti, who is the UEFA Director of Competitions, and Michael Hesselschwert, the UEFA Head of Club Competitions as well. They're already there. Welcome as well. And Giorgio, okay. the spotlight now is over to you. Thank you very much, Pedro and Anlor, and uh, good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. We are delighted to welcome you to Monaco once more to kick off the new season of the European Club Football with the draw ceremony for the 2016-17 UEFA Champions League group stage. 
I'm sure that uh, you join me in looking forward with great excitement to another thrilling season of football of the highest caliber. But let me first of all congratulate all of the 32 clubs that have qualified for the group stage of this season's UEFA Champions League. It goes without saying that a particularly warm welcome is due to Leicester City and Rostov, who are taking part in the group stage for the very first time. You are most welcome with us, sirs. The very best of luck to all the clubs setting out on what they hope will be a memorable journey, culminating in the final at Cardiff's National Stadium of Wales at the start of June next year. The dream of players from Europe and beyond is to hold the European club football's most prestigious trophy. That dream starts taking shape again today for another season with this eagerly awaited draw that will surely produce some classic encounters. It is just uh, three short months since the gripping final at Milan San Siro saw Real Madrid overcome their city rivals of Atletico de Madrid in a dramatic penalty shootout to win their 11th European title. Both clubs are again obviously among the 32 contenders who will be in action in the best club competition on the planet. The road to the final starts today as all participants find out who their opponents are in the group stage. The draw will begin in just a moment. Before we get going, let's take a quick look at the technical procedure we will be following here on stage. <laughs> The 32 teams have been allocated to four pots in accordance with the following principles. Pot one will comprise the title holder Real Madrid and the domestic champions of the seven top ranked associations in the access list. The remaining 24 teams have been divided into three pots based on their position in the UEFA club coefficient ranking. Since the same number of UEFA Champions League matches are played on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, the groups are divided in two colours, red for groups A to D and blue for groups E to H. The red groups will play on one match night and the blue groups will play on the other. This will alternate from match day to match day. For TV coverage reasons, every two teams from one country are paired in order to be split in red and blue groups. Please also note that based on a decision taken by the UEFA Executive Committee, teams from Russia and Ukraine shall not be drawn in the same group. The title holders and the domestic champions of Pot 1 will be drawn first. They will each be allocated, one after the other, to one of those groups from A to H, in accordance with the established principles, such as country protection and TV pairings. Once the first eight teams of Pot 1 have been allocated, the same procedure will apply for the pots 2, 3 and 4 to complete the groups. Once the draw procedure has been completed, a computer draw will determine the final position of all clubs within the eight groups, as the position in the group determines the match schedule. In this respect, the computer will ensure that stadium clashes and winter venues are taken into account. <laughs> Now that you understand how the draw works, let's take a look at the teams in pot one. These include the title holders, Real Madrid, and a team making their debut in this competition, English Premier League champions, Leicester. Back to you, Giorgio. Thank you, Anlour. So I really think that everything is ready. Clarence, you have the responsibility of drawing the champions because the pot one is the pot of the champions, champions of Europe and champions of their domestic leagues. So... You're ready. You're ready. Then you Born go. ready. Go. <laughs> so okay. You have one champion in your hands. One champion. But we don't know who. FC Barcelona. And uh, what a champion, FC Barcelona five-time winners of uh, the Champions League. And uh, probably nobody knows that they have another record, Barcelona. They won 17 times the group stage of the Champions League. That's a record. 
You got all the stats, John. An unknown record. Yeah, I have all the stats. So, so we are ready. All the groups are open for, uh, for Barcelona. Just wait for Jan to tell us. It's trickier than it looks sometimes. <laughs> it's trickier than it looks. Yeah. There we go. The ball is open. C. Group C. So we start with Group C for Barcelona. The Group C is in the red part. Yes, Nothing particularly that. interesting, but uh, that's a given. It will be later. Yes. And uh, now we are going to find out what the second team is. Leicester City FC. Wow. Leicester City, which is the wonderful surprise of the 15-16 season. The uh, unexpected winners of, uh, but uh, well-deserving winners of the, champion of the Premier League. And now they are here with us for the very first time. Obviously, all groups are open also for uh, Leicester City, with one exception, that's Group C, which is already taken by Barcelona. And uh, now you've made good, good practice, so you know how to open the ball, Jan. G. G. So for Leicester City, we have Group G. And uh, we can uh, proceed uh, with another champion. So we are the champions of uh, Spain and the champions of England. And now... Real Madrid, FC. And now CF. the champions of Europe, uh, of Real Madrid, uh, a okay. team that uh, Clarence <laughs> knows very well, I think. Just a little bit, right? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, a bit. <laughs> You remember your triumph with Real Madrid? Also just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> nice memories, never forgotten. Very nice. So we have three groups who are possible for Real Madrid, the group E or F or H. F. Group F, so for Real Madrid, we have Group F, and we are ready to progress in this draw. So three teams have been allocated to three different groups. Uh, with this, uh, we will be halfway through pot one. FC Bayern Munich. FC Bayern München, uh, also five-time winners of the Champions League. Uh, we have groups A, B, D, E, and H possible for Bayern. Uh, I think that uh, Carlo Ancelotti would be uh, particularly eager to win uh, the title with a third club. You know Carlo very well. Would be, uh, would be a nice record. <laughs> <laughs> you think we'll be very happy to win again? Yeah, yeah well, who not? <laughs> yeah. It's another one to sign out. Same again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one in? Yeah, all the way. So, <laughs> some <laughs> unexpected <laughs> difficulties with the opening of our balls. As you see, they've been closed very, very tightly. But we are there. D. Group D. So, Bayern is in Group D. And uh, Clarence will tell us What's the next team of Port 1? Benfica. Benfica. This time it is the Portuguese champions of Benfica. We have group A, B, E or H possible for Benfica. We have won, everybody knows of course, uh, twice the uh, uh, Champions Cup with Eusebio. That's right. What do, what do you say, Pedro? I say, I say I'm neutral, so I will talk about uh, Eusebio being uh, a legend of Portuguese football. Okay, <laughs> exactly, it's a great legend, and uh, we were all missing him. Very true. So 
So for Benfica, the group is B. Group B. So Benfica in group B, we are ready for another team. We don't have problems so we're opening the book. No, we found that technique. The expert. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of training. <laughs> CSKA Moscow. CSKA Moscow, Russian champions. Uh, they played the quarterfinals, uh, their best result in the UEFA Champions League in 2010. <coughs> so we are ready. CSKA Moscow can be Group A or Group E or Group H. We are almost there. Group? Yep. Tell us. E. Group E. Benfica goes into Group E. Only two teams to go to complete the pot one, the pot of the champions. And two champions still to be drawn. Two important champions. Paris Saint-Germain. The first important champion is Paris Saint-Germain. And uh, they can be drawn in one of the two groups, A or H. So we see, you know, that uh, Paris Saint-Germain scored the goal number 7,000 last season in the Champions League. Giorgio really walks around the uh, office with these statistics uh, like every I day. I don't do anything else, only stats. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> and the scorer was Angel Di Maria. Interesting. A. Group A. Paris Saint-Germain is in Group A, so it's obvious uh, who this team is, but uh, we want to see the paper with the name of, of uh, this uh, last champion team. Oh, it's the last one. Juventus. And of floor. course, it is Juventus. Uh, twice uh, winners of the Champions League and uh, five times in a row winners of the Italian League. So Juventus goes into Group H and uh, with Juventus we have completed for one. Thank you, Giorgio. Oh, thanks to Clarence for his help and his fabulous work. I mean, that was so efficient. Ladies and gentlemen, Clark and Sedor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're moving right on to pot two. Our next special guest is France's all-time leading goal scorer and was also part of Barcelona's historic treble winning side in 2009. There he was in action. You're going to see him on stage in a few seconds, even less than that. Here he is, Thierry Henry. Bienvenue. Bonsoir, Thierry. Bonsoir, 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 bonsoir. Well, we've seen some pictures of your years in Monaco. You didn't change, actually. I did. <laughs> Just a little bit. A lot, especially the Monaco picture. <laughs> After ma yeah, well, you tried for many years to win this trophy with Arsenal. And finally, you lifted it with Barcelona. How that moment was important. How, how big was that? It was actually special because it was actually the season before my last season in, uh, in Europe, I knew that already, and uh, it was the birthday of my daughter too. So that made it, that made it uh, extra special, but uh, Barcelona gave me that opportunity, and uh, I'll always be thankful for that. And it was an unbelievable season with the amount of trophies you won overall, so yes, it, was, it, was. it was really unforgettable. Thierry, we're going to ask you to 
join the draw table. Thank you. You're going to help us out with the next pot, where we have several very prestigious teams in European football. For example, we have last year's runners-up, Atletico de Madrid, the 97 winners, Borussia Dortmund, and also a team that I think Thierry knows a thing or two about, Arsenal. Giorgio, back to you. Yes. So, we are ready. Thierry is ready. Ready. Everybody wants to see. Let's go with this important pot. Big names also in pot two. Huh? Great teams. This is where we start getting the first gasps and uh, <laughs> yes. reactions from the crowd. Yes. Let's see. FC Porto. So the first team drawn is FC Porto, of obviously twice winners of uh, the Champions League and fresh of uh, their, uh, say, victorious playoff this week against AS Roma. So we are ready, and the four groups are possible for uh, uh, Porto, only the blue part, uh, E, F, G, and H. And we see now in which of the groups Porto will play. And with whom? G. Group G. Group G means that the Porto will be the first uh, team to take on the uh, surprise winners of the Premier League of Leicester City. So it should be very interesting. Huh? Should be. Yeah. <laughs> Same colors, blue and white. And uh, Let's go. we want to go, of course, we cannot stop here. Sevilla FC. Sevilla FC. Sevilla FC, five time winners of the Europa League and three times in a row, so two records. So great achievements for Sevilla, and this, this, thanks to these achievements that they are playing the Champions League now, it's very important for them and for European football. So we have five groups which are possible for Sevilla. Jan will tell us now which one among A, B, D, E, or H is the group of FC Sevilla. H. H, group H. So Sevilla will play again because it was the same last year, if I'm not wrong, with Juventus. So group H is Juventus and uh, Sevilla. So let's see now what is the next team and uh, where they go. Borussia Dortmund. And the next team is uh, Borussia Dortmund. Only two groups are possible for Borussia, Group E or Group F. You remember Borussia playing at the uh, final in, at Wembley against Bayern. And luckily for them, they were only runners-up. But they will try again this year. F. Group F, uh, this means uh, Borussia Dortmund uh, will play in the group with Real Madrid, the champions of Europe. I think they played recently, eh? semi-finals and quarter-finals. One was okay for uh, Borussia and one was okay mm. for Real Madrid. Arsenal. Arsenal. Uh, mm. So Thierry. <laughs> Now, <laughs> now we see where you've drawn Arsenal. Yeah. With what team? Then uh, it depends if your former club would be happy or not. If they have your phone number, they will call you. Let's see. <laughs> so five groups for Arsenal, uh, A, B, C, D, or E? Again. A. Group A, Paris, Saint-Germain, and Arsenal. Mm -hmm. What do you say? It's not bad. Not bad? Not bad at all. <laughs> not bad? No, not bad because good for football, eh? Great. Well, I'm not going to say anything, but everybody <laughs> knows who, who I support, but not bad. <laughs> it will be great matches. Let's go on. In case if Arsenal are not happy, you can say it's the fault of Jan Rush. Exactly. I didn't choose the group. Yes. 
Napoli. 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 Napoli can go into groups B, C or D. They made the round of 16 in 2012. They are trying again uh, this year to do better than the round of 16. But first, uh, we have to see who they have to overcome. B. Group B. Group B means that Napoli is drawn in the group with uh, Benfica. So Benfica and Napoli are the teams in uh, Group B. Bayer Leverkusen. Next team is uh, Bayer 04 Leverkusen. Group uh, E is the only group possible because of the various combinations. So we don't draw this time uh, the group because uh, they are allocated uh, directly in Group E and uh, their opponents will be the Russian champions of CSKA Moscow. Two more to go? Two teams spot. to go, yes. Two more teams to complete pot two. Atletico de Madrid. Club Atletico de Madrid, uh, the runners-up uh, of uh, the last season, you know, and, and the finalists in uh, two of the, of the three last finals of the uh, Champions League, so a very worthy team. For Atletico de Madrid also, we don't have uh, many options, and their group will be Group D. And in Group D, they will have to face uh, a big opponent, uh, FC Bayern München, which reminds us of a final of the 70s, uh, by admission, uh, Atletico de Madrid. It was a final which had to be replayed. Exactly. We didn't have the rule of the penalties. Uh. Manchester City. So Manchester City is the team completing part uh, two, Ooh. and their group is Not group C. Their, they take on in group C, FC Barcelona. <laughs> So another great uh, challenge in this group. That's all. The, bar, the floor is back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Thierry. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, merci. And ladies and gentlemen, this was Thierry Henry. Thank you, Thierry. Thank you. I'm going to say, right? Two down, two to go. We're now halfway through the draw. And so far, we've got some mouth-watering clashes already. I was scribbling them down. How about Manchester City versus Barcelona, Bayern, Atletico, Real Dortmund, Juve, Sevilla, among many others. Meanwhile, while I've been having a look at some of the fixtures, I seem to have lost my co-presenter again. Oh, yeah, there you are. That's you, right? Absolutely. I'm not that far. I'm just in the audience, because actually, it's the place to be for the European football family. It's the perfect place. I mean, 32 teams who are playing the Champions League this season are watching you, Pedro, I can say, and they are watching you with a lot of pressure. We've already drawn two parts, a lot of pressure for those people close to me because they are in pot three and pot four. So here we go to pot three and pot four. How next special guest is a Champions League icon. He used to play for Real Madrid and Manchester City. And Manchester United, what I say, why did I say? <laughs> <laughs> Goals, goals, and goals, that's what Ruud gave you. Please welcome him on stage right now, one of the most amazing strikers in the history of the Champions League, Mr. Van Nistelrooy. Ruud, it's definitely great to have you with us this evening. You're the fourth highest goal scorer in Champions League history, right? I think yes, so. you are. Okay. Yes, you are. <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. Well, so the, the question is, is goal scoring down 
more to skill, or is it more down to instinct or something like this? Well, it's a combination, I think, uh, to, to have the, the instinct of where to be or where to run, and also the, the ability to then you know, do what you, your, uh, your, the idea that comes up. So it's a combination, I think. You are very good at that. Yeah, I can say. He was one of the <laughs> two legendary number nines in uh, European football. Uh, time to get you busy. Are you okay with that? Yes. All right, let's go. Let's go. You can take your place next to uh, Giorgio as we start with pot three. Again, some very, very prestigious teams in this pot, such as Tottenham Hotspur. We also have Dynamo Kiev, Olympique Lyonnais, and uh, many other teams who are starting their Champions League campaign with high hopes, Giorgio. Help us find out where they're going. Yes. Now, Ruud will uh, help us find out <laughs> where these teams are going. And uh, Ruud, I think that uh, you're ready. ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shuffle. Yeah, of course. Yes. You know how to put the ball into the net, but I don't know if you are, know how to open yeah. a ball. Not, not really, but I'll try. <laughs> Olympique Lyonnais. Yeah, you know, you know. And uh, the first team drawn by Ruud is Olympique Lyonnais. Uh, for Olympique Lyonnais, we have four groups actually possible, uh, groups uh, E, F, G or H. Jan will tell us the group. Uh, Olympique Lyonnais were the semi-finalists in 2010, their best result in this competition. H. Group H. Uh, so group H means uh, Juventus and Sevilla. Good group. So so we have a team from Italy, one from Spain, and one from France already. Good starter. Sporting Club de Portugal. Sporting. Great pronunciation. Yeah. Obrigado. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it's it. Over? That's it. You don't yeah. have to say anything. Is, is that's all doing, okay. yeah, you, that's, you're all good. That's not a Portuguese class, I guess. Okay. okay. <laughs> good. So we can now see what is the group for Sporting Club de Portugal: A, C, D, E, or F. Yeah. Somehow champions of Europe because they they provided uh, four players to the uh, Portuguese team winning the Euro. Eh? Four. F. F, uh, group F, uh, it is the group of uh, Sporting Club uh, and uh, also here, what an opposition, Real Madrid and Borussia Dortmund. Very, very challenging for Sporting Club. I go, huh? You go, yes, yes. Everybody wants you to go. Uh, <laughs> not yet, I yes. hope. Tottenham Hotspur FC. The Spurs. So Tottenham Hotspur is the next no team. Draw. And uh, no we don't have a draw here because uh, they can only be in the blue part. Uh, and uh, they can be only in group E. So we allocate, uh, without a draw, uh, this team into group E. So we have Ceska Moscow, Bayer, Leverkusen, and Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah. So let's see the next team who they will be. FC Dynamo Kiev. Dynamo Kiev, uh, the Ukrainian champions. And here we do have a draw. Uh, the groups uh, are all possible for them, uh, which means uh, A, B, C, D, or G. Dynamo Kiev. Three times semi finalists in the UEFA Champions League uh, or the UEFA Champions Cup. Let's see the group now. B. Dynamo Kiev is drawn into group B, where they will have to face Benfica and Napoli. Let's go. So we are ready for another team and another group. 50% of the job is done. PSV Eindhoven. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. PSV Eindhoven, I think this club tells something to you. A lot. <laughs> a lot, eh? What, what are your memories? Good memories. Great memories. And still there, so... Uh, yeah. 
of course. Yeah. As you know, first love is never forgotten. That's it. So groups uh, A, C, D, or G for PSB Eindhoven. Let's see if uh, you uh, brought luck to them. So, uh, Ian is doing it. Yeah, he's doing the job. Yeah, yeah. Eh? So you can do nothing. Oh, no, Ian. <laughs> Here we go. D. Group D. So Eindhoven joins Bayern München and Atletico de Madrid. Not the easiest of the jobs. Great. I would say. No. Great clubs. Great clubs. Yeah, yeah. Well and it will be great matches. Be great matches. Club Brugge. Club Brugge. It's the next team. Uh, we have uh, three possibilities, uh, A, C, or G. Another statistic pill. Brugge scored the very first goal since the Champions League was introduced. Okay. Yeah. How well, many do you have left? <laughs> How many well, stats you got know. left? We'll see. <laughs> it will be a surprise. Okay. So three groups. Daniel Amokachi scored the goal. Wow. Okay. Yes. Nigerian international. Yeah. 92. G. Group uh, G. So Brugge will be with Leicester City and FC Porto in Group G. And yes, only two teams to go. Uh, Rud, tell us which is the next one. FC Basel. FC Basel, uh, Swiss champions of Switzerland. Uh, and for FC Basel, the draw will be between groups uh, A and C. So two possibilities. There are obviously, only two groups are open. And C. Seven times in a row, champions of Switzerland. So they are a great team in Switzerland, uh, and they want to be great in Europe as well. A. Group A. So, Group A, they will take on Paris Saint-Germain and Arsenal. So, we go with uh, the last team of this spot. Only one That's and uh, three quarters no, no. of the groups uh, are go. done. Borussia Mönchengladbach. Yes, Borussia Mönchengladbach is the last team. They will join uh, Barcelona and Manchester City Manchester in what we can Norway. now already predict will be a very tough group. Very Absolutely, tough. George. So now we know three of the teams in each of the groups. Our thanks to Ruud for his hard work, excellent work. Ladies and gentlemen, Ruud van Nistelrooy. Straight to pot four now. Our next guest on stage was a cornerstone of the Real Madrid and Brazil defense for many, many years. He was also known for his attacking because he actually redefined his role of a fullback. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for three times Champions League winner, Roberto Carlos. Roberto, bienvenido. Hablamos en español, que es el, el, el idioma de, 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 del club con quien ganaste este trofeo muchas veces. Uh, ¿Qué recuerdos tienes de, de, de tus años galácticos en Madrid? Era muy fácil jugar con esta gente, ¿no? <risa> jugar con jugadores tops para mí ha sido muy fácil y he aprendido muchísimo. Y jugar con la camiseta de Real Madrid, que tenemos 11, 11 Champions, no es para cualquiera. Entonces soy un, 
Soy muy agradecido a Real Madrid, muy agradecido por todo lo que me ha hecho. Well, thank you, Marce. Obrigado. 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 If you can take up your place next to Giorgio as we move on to the final pot. Yes, can... por favor. Vai atrás. And the teams in the pod include Celtic, Besiktas, Monaco, and Russian newcomers, Rostov. So, Giorgio, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So, the last pot, and uh, so we will complete uh, everything. Roberto, Dime. vamos. Vámonos. A mano, ver, mano caliente. A ver si consigo, a ver si consigo mover como, como Seidorf, ¿no? Seidorf iba, iba muy bien. Mira. Vamos a ver. Si estoy bien. So first team in pot four is Ludo, Lugo de Rest. PFC Ludo Goretz Razgrad from Bulgaria, second time <laughs> participating in the UEFA Champions League. No es fácil, no es fácil. 2014-2015, okay. And uh, we have all the possibilities for uh, Ludo Goretz. Uh, they can go into any of the eight groups. The balls are ready. Jan is ready. Uh, but the balls are not ready to be opened. Huh? Here we go. Please. Yeah. Hey. Group A, so Group A is the first group to be completed by Ludo Goretz with Paris Saint-Germain, with Arsenal, with Basel, and now Ludo Goretz Resgrad, Roberto. Una otra. Una más. La gente está aprensiva. Copenhagen. Copenhagen, FC Copenhagen. Here we are. Copenhagen, they have seven possibilities uh, from Group B up to Group H. Everything is possible. And uh, Copenhagen uh, is still in our records the first, the only, first and only Danish team having progressed to the group stage. It happened in the 2010-11 uh, season. They will give it another try for sure this year. Let's see. What is their group? G. Group G. Group G means that uh, Copenhagen will uh, have to face Leicester City, Porto, and Bruges to win uh, the uh, qualification to the uh, knockout rounds. Certainly not easy. Not at all. It's worth giving a try. Eh? Third team. Legia. Legia Warsaw. Legia Warsaw. So, champions of Poland. So, they uh, can go into uh, one of the six open groups, uh, B, C, D, E, F, or H. So, uh, after 20 years, we finally have uh, one Polish team back into our group stage of uh, the Champions League. A and dramatic qualification this week against yes. Dundalk. Yes. It, was, it looked easier after the first match, but in fact it but was it not. Wasn't. No. Yeah. You had to struggle a lot. F. Group F. Uh, group F uh, means that Legia Warsaw is joining Real Madrid, Borussia Dortmund, and Sporting Club de Portugal. Now. The ball is open, and the team is? Monaco. AS Monaco, so our hosts of this draw here uh, in the Principality of Monaco. Uh, B, C, D, and E are the groups which are possible for uh, AS Monaco, fresh of uh, uh, beating mm -mm. Villarreal. That was a great playoff. And uh, Monaco. We'll go into group E. Group E. Group E is with uh, Ceska Moscow, Bayer, Leverkusen, and Tottenham Hotspur. 
for only four teams uh, to complete the last spot uh, and to complete all the groups of the UEFA Champions League 2016-2017. Mm. So, this team is... Dinamo. Dinamo Zagreb. So, Zagreb. Dinamo Zagreb is uh, now the team to be drawn into one of the groups uh, between uh, BCD and H. So, the Croatian champions, six time or six times already in the group phase of our competition. The ball is uh, not easy to open. Here we go. So now we see the group. One second, and Jan will show us. H. Group H. Group H uh, means uh, Juventus, but also Sevilla and uh, Olympique Lyonnais. With this, uh, we are only three teams to go. For groups B, C, and D. Voilà. Mejor, no? Stand? Mejor. Mejor, mejor. FC Rostov. FC Rostov, uh, I remind you, is a newcomer of the UEFA Champions League. And uh, Rostov can go into groups uh, C or D. D. Group D. Group D, they are filling the group uh, where they, we have already allocated Bayern München, uh, Atletico Madrid, uh, and uh, PSV Eindhoven. Roberto, second last team, then your job is over. Our job is over. Your job mm. is not over. Our job is definitely not over. Okay. Besiktas. Besiktas, uh, the winners of the Turkish League. Uh, for Besiktas, we have two possibilities, uh, 2000, uh, sorry, Group B and Group C. And uh, so we see which of the two groups are possible or will be. Both, both groups are possible, one only will be drawn. That's B. B. With Besiktas, uh, we have uh, now filled also Group B, including Benfica, Napoli and Dinamo Kiev. And uh, we have only one team. Roberto is uh, showing this team uh, to all of you in uh, probably just a few seconds, uh, if he managed to open the ball. <laughs> <laughs> now it is done. And uh, Celtic. And the last team, uh, but not the least, is Celtic FC, former winners of uh, the Champions Cup. So Celtic completes, uh, like this, uh, Group C with Barcelona, with Manchester City, and with Borussia Mönchengladbach. Thank you, Giorgio. 32 teams, one dream to make it to Cardiff and win the UEFA Champions League. Let's take a look back at the eight groups now that they are complete, starting with Group A, Paris Saint-Germain, Arsenal, FC Basel, and Ludo Goretz. Group B, Benfica, Napoli, Dinamo Kiev, and Besiktas. Group C, Barcelona, Manchester City, M Borussia Mönchengladbach and Celtic, and Group D, FC Bayern München, Atletico de Madrid, Eindhoven, and Rostov. In E, we have CSK Moscow, Bayer Leverkusen, Tottenham, and Monaco. In F, Real Madrid, Borussia Dortmund, Sporting, and Legia Warszawa. In Group J, Leicester City, FC Porto, Bruges, Copenhagen, and in Group H, Juventus, Sevilla, Olympique Lyonnais and Dynamo. I can't wait until it starts. All right, our thanks to Roberto, to Ian, and all our guests who have been here this evening. Also, of course, to Giorgio and Michael. Thank you very much. A warm applause for the draw panel. Thank you. Ian's taking the trophy back with him. Not home, though. You're not taking it home. <laughs> and he wasn't living without it, actually. Well, the UEFA Champions League draw may be over, but we're not done yet. Far from it. Time for a change of scene as we get ready to crown the best men's and women's player in Europe.
Just like magic, we've got a new stage. It's now, a kind of magic. It's a, it is a kind of magic. Now, these awards recognize the top footballers, irrespective of nationality, playing in one of UEFA's national associations over the last season. And we begin with the Women's Award. The nominees are Ada Ergerberg, Jennifer Marochan, and Amandine Henry. So let's see some action for last season. Three fantastic players who enjoyed amazing seasons. And if you're wondering about the voting process, the final nominees and the winner have been selected by a jury composed of 20 prestigious journalists committed to supporting women's football. Now, unfortunately, one of the nominees, Amandine Henry, can't be with us here this evening. Therefore, I would like to ask the other two, Ada and Jennifer, to please join us on stage. You can join us, both of you. Thank you very much. Warm round of applause to both final nominees for the UEFA Women's Best Player in Europe Award. Good evening. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Good evening. Well, let's start with Ada. Very well done. I guess it was a perfect season with the Olympique Lyonnais. Well, it was your first Women's Champions League. You won against Wolfsburg. Well, that was the best moment of your career, I can imagine, was it? Yeah, it was, uh, it was an amazing feeling, of course. It was my first victory in the Champions League and it kind of crowned a fantastic season, both for the team and personally. So, obviously, really happy with that. Well done. Jennifer, um, you had quite an active season. Your team, Frankfurt, made it to the semifinals of the UEFA Women's Champions League. Then you went out to Brazil, to Rio de Janeiro, to take part in the Olympics with the women's uh, German team. And you brought back a gold medal How amazing is that? Yeah, I can't uh, still believe what happened in the Maracan Stadium. And I'm so proud of uh, all my teammates and I'm very thankful for this moment. And congratulations. Thank you. Unforgettable. <laughs> the third nominee, Amandine Henry, is now playing with the Portland Thorns in the National Women's Soccer League in the United States. But she did send us a video message talking about her nomination. Bonsoir à tous. Voilà, je tenais à m'excuser pour mon absence de ce soir parce que je suis actuellement à Portland où on prépare un gros match pour ce week-end. Donc voilà, je tenais à remercier toutes les personnes qui ont voté pour moi et, et je suis très fière de faire partie de, des trois meilleures joueuses. Et merci à tous, à, à toutes mes coéquipières et puis au président, à mon équipe et que la meilleure gagne. And we really appreciate Amandine sending that message from the United States. So let's find out who won this year's UEFA Best Women's Player in Europe Award. And to make the announcement, I'd like to ask the first UEFA Vice President, Mr. Angel Maria Villar Llona, who is here with us tonight, to come on stage. Por favor, señor Villar Llona. Buenas tardes. Hola, buenas tardes. 
Un beso por quedarse también. aquí en el centro con nosotros. Also joining us, the chairman of the European Sports Media Group, whose journalists helped vote for this award, Mr. Rainer Olschu. Welcome, Rainer. He's got the all-important envelope. Handing it over to Mr. Vidal Yona. <laughs> Thank you. Ada Erobar. Ada, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations to Ada. <laughs> Amazing season, okay? And uh, at the beginning of the show, we said we've been asking for questions from social media. I'm going to pick two questions uh, from fans rather than ask you one myself. I think that's, that, that's cooler as well for the fans. So uh, I got one from LN14 from Twitter who says, which career moment has marked you the most so far? And you're only 21, so... Yeah. Um, no, it's got to be the Champions League victory. Um, as I said earlier, it was an uh, ambition for us to go for all the trophies this year, and, and we did it, and it was a great team effort, and standing here today with these trophies is truly an honor, so I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. It's an amazing feeling. And another quick one from Alexander Yonga. Now that you've won everything with Olympique Lyonnais, what will be your individual goal for this season? Maybe you get to 60 goals, because you scored, what, 40, uh, 54 this year, right? I think I'm going to go for 60 this year. Um, <laughs> Christian would like that. <laughs> He's no, reached those numbers. Um, I don't know. Just keep on developing, uh, keep on winning a new trophy with our, our team. Uh, that's our ambition this year as well. So uh, I hope we'll get to the final winner this year as well. So same ambition as last year. Fantastic. Good luck with that. Thank you so much. Thank you all very much. Felicitations. Well, now you play in France. It's your home here. So, felicitations, Ada. I think they both deserve a great round of applause, For ladies sure. and gentlemen. For sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, very good. Ya nos vemos. Puede volver ya nos vemos. We now turn our attention to the men's award. The nominees all play their club football in Madrid, quite curiously, even though they represent three different countries. They are Gareth Bale, Antoine Griezmann, and Cristiano Ronaldo. Before inviting them to join us here on stage, let's see them in action. Gareth Bale, Real Madrid. Wales. Champions League. Antoine Griezmann. France. Soulier d'or. Atletico de Madrid. Joueur du tournoi. Cristiano Ronaldo. Portugal. Real Madrid.
Champions League. Beautiful. Petra, would you made an exception and give the trophy to the three of them? Can't do that. Okay. Sorry. That's Can't a do shame. that. They all did have great seasons. Okay. The voting of this award was done by journalists from the European Sports Media Group representing UEFA's 55 member associations. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Antoine Griezmann, Gareth Bale, and Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano, I'll start, and uh, of course I am neutral, but I have to say as a Portuguese citizen, thank you, obrigado, for winning the Euro. Never forget it, one of the best moments of my life. You also won the Champions League, of course. Best season ever? Probably. Uh, in terms of trophies, I can't say yes, but it's such amazing years since I started to play football. Every year is the same, so good, I'm enjoying myself, but this year was special. Uh, first of all, because we win first time in history of Portugal that important cup for Real Madrid again to win La Decima. So it was an amazing year. I have to say thank you to my teammates, thank you to the Portuguese players, thank you to everyone to be part of the success of the national team. So amazing year. I'm so happy. Antoine, nous aussi, les Français, nous sommes fiers de ce que vous avez fait. Vous avez atteint la finale de l'Euro en France devant votre public. Vous avez atteint la finale de la Ligue des Champions. Alors certes, vous ne les avez pas gagnés, mais c'est quand même une saison extraordinaire. Qu'est-ce que ça représente pour vous d'être ici parmi les nominés aux meilleurs joueurs européens de la, de la saison bah, Très heureux d'abord parce que le, le travail paye et, et que voilà, je ne me suis pas trompé en rejoignant l'Atlético de Madrid. Donc très content d'avoir des, des coéquipiers de, de ce niveau. Et ensuite, aussi c'est grâce à, aux joueurs de la sélection, aux supporters qui m'encouragent tous les jours. Donc c'est aussi un peu grâce à eux. Donc les remercier et, et continuer à travailler comme ça parce que je suis sur le, le bon chemin. Continuez, continuez. Gareth, um, Champions League winner, Euro semi-finalist. If uh, I would have told you that before the, the beginning of the season, I think you'd be pretty happy with that, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think one amazing year for Real Madrid. I think we're, for us, it's, the Champions League is uh, the most important. It's uh, what the club's made for. And um, yeah, to, to win the Champions League, all, the, all the, the teammates, the staff, the fans have been incredible this year. And um, yeah, it was incredible. And, and for Wales, for, for us to, to get so far and... and Yeah, achieve what probably we never thought we would achieve was, was an incredible journey and uh, yeah, one we will uh, continue to, to build on. Well, thanks for now, gentlemen. Mr. Vilayona, if I could ask you to join us on stage once again to reveal the UEFA Best Player in Europe 2015-2016. Por favor, otra vez. And also joining us on stage, the man who brings the all-important envelope, Rainer Holzschuh, as the drama continues to build. Cristiano Ronaldo. Congratulations. Well, one obvious question, how does it feel? Great. Good. <laughs> well, of course I feel happy. It was an unbelievable season. I will be not fair if I'm not going to mention these two amazing players. I think they deserve it too because they, they play amazing. They did a fantastic year. Griezmann, sorry to lost for uh, 
the final, the both finals, the guys semi-finals, sorry for Portugal. But I think you deserve too because you're an amazing player and you did an unbelievable season. Well, as Pedro... As Pedro mentioned earlier, we have so many questions from social media, so I'm just going to pick one from DT Isol. When you were a kid, which was your biggest dream? My biggest dream? To be a football player, to have a success uh, in the football. And I think this is what I did. So did dreams come true? Dreams coming true. That's yes. wonderful. Well, that's a very nice end, actually. That brings us to the end of this exciting show. Congratulations to Ada and Cristiano. And thanks again, of course, to all the guests who are with us today in this room. And now the countdown for the UEFA Champions League group stage starts now. Only three weeks to go before we kick off. Good luck to all those clubs involved, of course. From Anne Loch, myself, everyone here on stage, and the whole team. Here in Monaco, it's au revoir. Thank you.